So what is the composition? Well, the composition is the equation uh, which gives you the mass fractions of all the components in a gas. So what is the mass fraction? The mass fraction is if I take this room and measure how much mass of the key species I have, I divide it by the mass of the everything in this room, and I get the mass fraction here. As I said, the mass fraction of oxygen, for example, today in this room must be of the order of 23%. Now, the problem is that I need this Y case here for all the species in my gas. So if I have 3,000 species, I need 3,000 mass fractions. That means I will need to solve for 3,000 more equations. How do these equations look like? Well, uh, this looks like this. I will come back to that in the next course. Uh, you have a term here which tells you how the mass of the key species is changing. Here you have the flux due to convection. And here you have two things you don't know for the moment. This is the diffusion velocity of the species K. I will tell you what it is later. And this is the reaction weight. Of course, the reaction weight here, uh, you, you are used to see this equation without these two terms. Okay? This is what you call the continuity equation. The continuity equation in a gas where there is no combustion just tells you that mass is conserved. Mass is flowing, you cannot lose it. Either you get accumulation of mass or it flows away to another place. With combustion, it's different. You can have uh, an element where you enter with uh, methane and the methane will disappear here and come out as CO2. So this will take place through this term which is called the reaction term. Now, reactions terms are determined by chemical kinetics, just what I've told you before. And the diffusion here of this term is something called transport. I will, I will tell you also what this is soon. Let's, let's start with chemical kinetics. This famous reaction weight in this equation, this one here. How is it written? Well, this is the job which was done by Arrhenius a long time ago. Arrhenius said, okay, if I have a reaction A plus B goes to C, what is the speed of that? He said, well, if I want to know the speed of this reaction, it's probably going to be proportional to the mass fraction of A. If there is no A, there is no combustion. Same thing for B. And then what he found is that he had to add a term here, which is exponential <coughs> minus TA over T. TA is a constant. This is what we call the activation temperature. And T is the local temperature. So what does this equation mean? If you want to have combustion, if you want to burn something, you need fuel, you need oxidizer, and you need temperature. You see this term, if temperature is small, okay, this is an exponential minus something which is large, so this is zero. In this room, if I add gas, okay, if I fill this room with gas, nothing will happen. Okay? You, will, you might get sick, but no one will be killed as long as you don't have a hot spot somewhere. If someone then ignites something, or if you have a spark somewhere, if the temperature somewhere goes up, this term will go down, the exponential will go down, and then this thing will get crazy, and combustion will start. So combustion requires three things, the ox fuel, the oxidizer, and the temperature. And this is a very interesting property of combustion that we use every day. Huh? Uh, but it's also it's important to realize that it conditions the, what we call the regimes of combustion. So what is the, the regime of combustion? The regimes of combustion are defined in the following way. It depends how you mix the fuel and the oxidizer. The simplest way to do combustion is what we call the premixed case. Premixed means you take A, you mix it with B, and then you ignite it. So typically, you take this room, you bring gas, you mix everything, everything is ready to, for combustion, and then you ignite it. That's what you do, for example, in a piston engine. In a piston engine, classical piston engine, you fill the engine, you fill the piston with air, you add the gasoline, you let it evaporate. When it's mixed, you ignite the spark and you get combustion. So that's a very efficient way to do combustion. But there is one problem, is that once you have mixed the A and the B here, you just need a spark and then everything goes away, everything burns. And, and that's dangerous, okay? You don't want to do that in terms of safety, of course. It's extremely dangerous to be in a situation where you just need the spark to get everything burning. So the other solution is to do what we call diffusion flames or non-premixed flames, in which case you keep the A and the B separately. You don't mix them. Okay? This is what you do, for example, in a rocket engine. You know, you get one place where you store the oxygen, one place where you store the hydrogen, and you mix them at the last instant. You don't mix them before. That, 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 that would be just uh, suicide. Okay? Uh, 
The funny thing about diffusion flames, if you look at it, I will show that, uh, I think, in, in three or four courses, uh, it's surprising that you can mix them at the same time and they will still burn. Okay? They will burn at the same time as you mix them, they will mix and burn at the same time. The problem is that this is not very efficient. It's safe, but it's not very efficient. And this is where fluid mechanics come into our story. Fluid mechanics is what determines how you mix things. If you mix them before, or if you mix them at the last moment, this is done by the, fluid, the way you have organized the flow. So, uh, to summarize this business about regimes of combustion, you have here these two classical regimes. The first one is the premixed, which is the most efficient, the less pollutant, but the most dangerous. It's called the bomb also, if you want, so if you have uh, this kind of system. Uh, the diffusion of the non-premixed are less efficient, they are more, pollut more pollutant, I will show you why, but they are much less dangerous. And the problem in industry is that we don't want to carry a premixed system with us, we don't want uh, an aircraft where you get a tank with premixed gases, uh, and we don't want uh, that, of course, in your car, so we want to have something which is uh, a diffusion mode, but still if we want to make efficient, we want to mix it as fast as possible. So let me give you um, an example. Uh, this is a combustion chamber. This looks actually exactly like the one you had in your hands here. There is a place where we inject the fuel here. Here we get the swirlers when we inject the air. And in this zone, we mix the fuel and the air. We try to mix it as fast as possible. We store the kerosene somewhere. We, keep, we get the air from the compressor. And we try to mix things here fast. The problem is that this was the design people had a few years ago. And in the combustion chamber, things were not really mixed, not mixed enough. It's like cooking again. If things are not mixed, you don't get a good result. So they thought, well, we should add an additional tube here. And the role of this tube is that the air and the fuel should mix here before they burn. And if we do that, we will have something which is more premixed here than here. And so we'll have a better flame. So in, the, in the, the idea of these systems, and they have been generalized under the name LPP, and I think most of the gas turbine companies have a system like this today, is that you would have here injection, here you would have mixing, and here you would have combustion. And like always, flames don't always do what you expect them to do, because if you start having a zone here where you have air and fuel mixed, what can happen is this thing. You can have what we call flashback. The flame, instead of staying here, the flame will see here that there is a way to propagate, and so the flame will come back and come into this system. And again, if, if this happens, this is the end of the system. I've shown you a picture like this before. This is an example where the flashback here, and you burn completely the, the injector. So how does this happen? Just an example of a very old LES we did here in a PhD maybe 10 years ago. Uh, this is a, a cut here. This is the axis of symmetry of the system I've shown you. Here we're injecting fuel. Here we're injecting air. You can see the cold gases here and the burned gases here. This is what we call a, a, a stable regime where the flame will stay there. That means it's exactly the place where we want it to be. We have mixing here in this tube. This is the mixing tube from here to there. And the combustion, as you can see, stays exactly what, where we expect it to be. So this is a nominal regime. The problem with a system like this is that if you change again a little bit the regime, you decrease the power, for example, what can happen is this problem. Now you will see that we are decreasing the, uh, the flow rates here, and the flame, instead of staying here, will have a bad idea of flashback and coming to this point. Now this is the end of the story here. And you can see that, of course, a system like this cannot be used in, in a real engine. It would be too dangerous. The system is too sensitive to a small change. So this is an example of where, again, we try to use a system and use the fluid mechanics to get a premixed flame here, but then we can have other problems. And again, we come back to what I mentioned before. Combustion instabilities are always uh, very close to our problem. Same example here in, the, in a burner coming from Alstom. Alstom uh, had designed a very complex burner a few years ago. Some of you probably are too young to remember that, but Alstom almo almost went bankrupt when was that? Six years, eight years ago. And uh, it may, may have been Sarkozy in that time who worked on that. But in the end, what happened is that all your parents and me paid for Alstom with our taxes to be able to avoid that this company goes bankrupt. Today it's doing very well. But at that time they had problems with this burner. 
And uh, the problem is the gas turbine is that if you sell a gas turbine to a customer and the gas turbine is not working, it's making noise or it's vibrating, the customer stops the gas turbine and then you have to pay for the money which is lost by your customer. And uh, uh, this is a lot of money. It could be typically 50,000 euros a day. So if you have 100 gas turbines in this world and they don't work for 100 days, you can multiply 50,000 by 100 by 100. You see right away that you, you're going to go bankrupt very fast. And so the problem is this burner is that it was, again, optimized to be very efficient in terms of pollution and, and uh, uh, efficiency, but it had problem of instabilities. It's a very complex system. Um, I'm just going to show you an example of, the, of how it works. You have air coming here, and here you have fuel injection. And uh, the, the way it, it works is that the system is staged. You're injecting air, you're inj injecting air here, and the methane is injected here. These are all here small methane jets. You have many jets to try to mix things rapidly. Again, the objective is to mix things as fast as possible. So here you get the mixing tube, basically, where you mix the air and the fuel. And here you get the combustion taking place here. This is the reaction rate you see here. And you see here how the system works when it works the way it should. That means you have injection, mixing, and combustion. Now, this is the nominal regime, and this is the way it works actually today. Now they have fixed the problem. But in certain cases, you could have what I'm going to show you now. Instead of working that way, you would have this regime. It's another solution of the same Navier-Stokes equation, except here, again, you get a coupling with acoustics. And again, you see in this uh, free mechanics problem where we try to optimize for combustion, we get into a problem of combustion instabilities. What's happening here? Well, basically, the acoustics get into the picture, and you have uh, not at the same time, but you have injection, and then combustion, and then injection and combustion, and the whole system pulsates. These pulsations are not always a problem. Uh, for example, well, not a problem. One of the famous systems where we did, not we, the Germans actually did uh, pulsating combustion on purpose was the V1 during the Second World War. They designed an engine which was designed to work in a pulsated mode. But if you don't want it, if you don't plan on it, of course it's a problem. If your system is not designed to resist it, and so in that case, that was the problem. And this problem was fixed. The problem is not a, you can always fix it, it's just that it costs money. Okay, uh, I want to say something about turbulence now. Uh, you